ride with the final drive of her engine. 200 tons are airborne, five months ahead of time. 70 feet off the water, she stays for a mile. $23 million worth of airplane has answered a lot of committee questions. It can fly. And fly, it did. Surrounded by controversy and skepticism, the Spruce Goose finally went airborne on November 2nd, 1947. It weighed 200 tons, with eight engines and a wingspan longer than a football field. The Spruce Goose was the largest aircraft ever made, six times larger than any other plane in existence. But the story behind this massive aircraft was years in the making. In 1942, America was relatively new to World War II, and looming in the Atlantic, Germany's dangerous U-boats. So the U.S. government started looking for someone to build an airplane, massive enough to carry hundreds of men and equipment across the Atlantic, while flying out of reach of the U-boats. Henry J. Kaiser was picked to come up with the design. Kaiser was an industrial tycoon who was known as the father of modern American shipbuilding. He eventually backed out of the project, but not without bringing on Howard Hughes first. Hughes was the American entrepreneur. He was an actor, filmmaker, engineer, businessman, and pilot. And in 1942, Howard Hughes became the designer of the Spruce Goose. There are a hundred instruments to check on this panel alone before the test begins. A test that is to startle the aviation world. With the war effort in full swing, metals like steel and aluminum were heavily restricted. So Howard Hughes made the Spruce Goose out of wood. When it was completed, this impressive plane could carry more than 700 men into battle. There'd been so much controversy about this flying boat, the biggest aircraft ever built, that her tests made headline news in the States. Clearly, the Spruce Goose was no small feat, but by the time it was finished, World War II was over. Hughes refused to stop working on his masterpiece, but Congress was skeptical. The government put about $20 million into the project without any proof that it could fly. But Hughes spent millions out of his own pocket to bring the flying boat to life. And when called before Congress, he insisted it was not a waste. I put the sweat of my life into this thing. I have my reputation rolled up in it. And I have stated several times that if it's a failure, I'll probably leave this country and never come back, and I mean it. And on November 2nd, 1947, Hughes proved the Spruce Goose was not a failure. Now Hughes is at the controls as the eight engines roar and the ship gets going. The plane flew one mile at an altitude of 70 feet for one minute over Long Beach Harbor. But even though the maiden voyage was a success, the Spruce Goose never flew again. He flew her just above the water for about a mile, and I'll bet that gave the millionaire pilot one of the biggest thrills in a lifetime full of thrilling adventures. Now, the Spruce Goose sits at the Evergreen Aviation Museum in Oregon as a colossal symbol of American invention, industry, and innovation. <laughs>